Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a very silly and comically named card game called Monkey Butt. This game is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. You can actually follow the link up in the top corner of your screen as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Those links will take you to the Kickstarter page and you can find out even more information and hopefully consider backing the project. Now, Monkey Butt, and I'll never get tired of saying that, is a family weight card game. So don't worry too much about the butt in the title. Uh, the artwork in the game is just of cute monkeys on the cards, but what essentially what you're trying to do, this is uh, uh, has in some ways some um, things in common with some more traditional card games like uh, you might find like Crazy 8s and things like that but with a lot of other extra things going on. Essentially what's trying to happen is um, one player is going to be the loser of the game no matter how many players you're playing with. That player is the titular monkey butt by having cards in hand when everyone else has gotten rid of all of their cards. But it's a bit more complicated than that even though the game is easy to learn because there's a lot of special powers going on and things like that. So let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype copy of the game. So what you see in the final version may be different than what you see here. But then we're going to come back. I'll give you my final thoughts. Monkey Butt is a competitive card game for two to eight players. The goal of the game is, well, to just not be the titular Monkey Butt. That is to say, you do not want to be the last person to, with any cards in hand. Everyone else is a winner. To get started, simply shuffle the deck and deal six cards out to every player. Then, deal out another card face down in front of each player that they are not allowed to look at for the duration of the game until the very end. The rest forms a draw pile. Each player then picks one card to place face up on that hidden card from their hand. We'll call that position A. Then they'll do it again and put another card face up in a position that we'll call B. Finally, each player hands their remaining four cards to the player on their right, and that player chooses yet another card to play face up in a third position called C in front of you. These cards stay like this until close to the end of the game. We'll get back to them shortly. The first player to the left of the dealer who has a 1 in hand will play it down to start the discard pile. If no one has a 1 in hand, then you move on to 2, or 3, and so on. Play continues in clockwise order, with each player playing a card from their hand on top of the previous card, which must be higher than or equal to the previous card. Most cards are simply numbered cards, from 1 to 12, and in different colors. Two of the numbers actually have special effects. The one of each color will block the use of any other card of the matching color until the current discard pile is picked up by a player or burned, which I'll explain soon. The 8, on the other hand, forces the next player to play either another 8 or a lower card instead of a higher card. However, you may be able to play a special card instead. The Zen Monkey can be played on any card, and any card can be played on it. King Kong can be played on any card except for an 8, but no numbered card can be played on it. Pyro Monkeys can be played on anything except for 8s, and they will burn the discard pile, forcing it to be permanently set aside and starting a new pile. A few Pyro Monkeys are wild in color and cannot be blocked by 1s. Some super special cards have green borders, and when you play these, they will be permanently removed from the game after you've played them. Like the Monkey Thief who lets you steal a card from another player, or the titular Monkey Butt card that forces someone to pick up the discard pile. Back to the main game. If you cannot or do not want to play a card on your turn, you must pick up the current discard pile and add it to your hand. If a player ever has less than three cards in hand after their play, they must draw back up to three unless the draw pile is empty. If you have two or more of the same card, you can play them all together. If five of any particular card are played consecutively by one or more players, the discard pile becomes burnt and set aside. Once the draw pile is empty and you have no more cards in hand, you now must play your table cards. On the next turn, you must play either the B or the C card. If you can't, you have to pick up the discard pile and can add one of those two cards to your hand. Once you run out of cards again, you can attempt to play the remaining of those two cards on the table and repeat this as necessary and if necessary to play the B card, then the C card, or in reverse order, and then the A card, and then finally your face down card. This continues until all but one player has eliminated all of their cards. 
That is Monkey Butt. Now on to my final thoughts. Well, of course, with a uh, silly title like that, you don't want to take Monkey Butt too seriously. But the thing is, this is a family weight card game that is very, very easy to learn, very easy to get into, and very easy to play with casual players and with young players. But uh, what's interesting is that you can play this game with more strategically minded uh, gamers, or not even just like gamers gamers, but people who typically play more complicated card games like, I don't know, Bridge or Rummy or things like that. Uh, because there are a lot of special powers in the game and uh, cards that force you to sort of think outside the box and be a little more creative with how you play your cards, when you play your cards, how you choose to use them and when you use them at the best time. Uh, so you may not want to use your special cards until you absolutely need to, but you can always guarantee that you can play and you don't have to pick up the discard pile. Uh, and you just have to wait for those strategic moments in order to be out. And you, uh, And then, of course, it's even more complicated than that because... In the beginning of the game, you have to choose cards, and unfortunately one of your opponents will have to choose a card for you that will be placed down to the table, and you know that you're going to have to play those cards at the end in order to fully be out in the game, but that's going to be a little bit easier said than done, of course, so you have to kind of build up to that and determine how the best way that you're going to be able to play these cards is. Hopefully you can even get some doubles action going on, because if you can play multiple cards, if you have multiple cards of the same uh, number or type, you can play them all all at the same time. So if you can work up together with a combo like that, then you're good to go. But of course, there is that one face down card that you absolutely cannot look at at all during the course of the game. And hopefully it just works out for you. So hopefully all of your planning didn't come for naught. You definitely want to be in a position where you don't have any cards in the discard pile at all, should you have to take the penalty of picking up the discard pile. So try to burn it when you can, which is another interesting mechanism of the game, being able to burn the discard pile and get rid of it. Uh, the game moves very quickly. Like I said, it's very easy to learn and to get into. And it does have that really silly, family-friendly theme to it that I think a lot of people can get behind. So th what I'm trying to say is that the game is very accessible. A lot of people can probably get into it with no problem whatsoever. And if you're one of those people, if you uh, think that, that sounds like it's right up your alley, or you know other people who will definitely enjoy the game with you, then you should definitely go to the official Kickstarter project page and find out more information for yourself. There will be a link up in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Those will take you to the, fix the official Kickstarter project page, find out more information than I could possibly tell you here, and hopefully consider backing the project. That is the card game Monkey Butt. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.